An ecological footprint is the area of land and water required to sustainably provide all resources at the rate at which they are being consumed by a given population. So what exactly does that mean? Well, let's first look at a slightly overly simplified example. Imagine we've got this small family of four and they live on corn maize, tomatoes and fish. They've got an area of land that they own and they grow all of their food on that. They don't take anything from outside of that area. Since we've got four people there, let's say that they require 0.25 square kilometers per person to survive. Now, could we say that their ecological footprint is 0.25 square kilometers per person? Well, no, this is drastically oversimplified because the food that is produced is not the only thing that is required. So what exactly is required by, um, by an ecological footprint? Well, first of all, we've got cropland. That's the one we've mentioned. That's the area of land for growing food for humans and animals. Next, what about forest land, for example, for timber products? Now, there are lots of products that are produced by forests, but let's think about timber as an example. Do they have a house that's made of wood? Do they have furniture made of wood? Do they have shelving in their house that's made of wood? Any wood product would need to be taken into account. What about built-up land, for example, their house? How much area does that take up? The factories that produce the products that they use, they have a certain stake in that land area. What roads do they use? Uh, that Part of that makes up their ecological footprint. Next, what about carbon? So the land that's required to sequester, which kind of means absorb the carbon that they release. For example, if they burn fossil fuels, they are releasing carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and it requires plants to take that back in. So what area of land of plants is required to do that? Next would be grazing land and that's the land for the animals for the products that they use. So animals that they eat as meat, uh, as dairy, um, eggs that are produced leather for their shoes, this kind of thing. And then lastly, what about fishing ground? Now, we can't exactly measure that as an area of land because fish are so mobile and spread over a large area. And they use ideas of primary, primary production to calculate this. But essentially, fishing ground must be taken into account with an ecological footprint. It's always measured in an area per person. And a common and convenient way to do this is global hectares per person. There are a lot of variations in the ecological footprint. It can vary by country because... In different nations, there are different amounts of electricity use. There are different eating habits and transport methods, all sorts of different things that influence the average ecological footprint of a person in a country. It can also vary per person. You are not going to have exactly the same ecological footprint as your best friend. For example, uh, vegetarianism has a big influence because then that changes the amount of area required for the animals that you would consume. The use of renewable energy, do you have solar panels on your house? How do you get to school or to work if you use a car or do you use a bike? This would influence your ecological footprint. According to the Global Footprint Network, the biocapacity of Earth is 1.73 global hectares per person. Basically, that's how large an ecological footprint every person on Earth can sustainably have. The actual ecological footprint that each person takes is more like 2.84. So this begs the question, are we beyond our carrying capacity? Can we continue on like this? Are we living unsustainably? And yes, these numbers do suggest that we are taking more than the earth can possibly give. But let's try and provide a slightly balanced argument about that. Let's think what a technocentrist might think about that. Is it possible that as we've got more people on Earth, we are going to come up with more technology and more methods to grow things in smaller areas, which would mean the bio capacity and our ecological footprints would actually change? Exam help, how might you get assessed on this? Nice simple question, outline the concept of an ecological footprint. Well, first off, give the definition. There's often a mark available for that. In this case, that's quite detailed and it's possible there might be two marks available for giving that full definition. The next thing, the ecological footprint includes the population's waste disposal requirements. And that's not expressly stated in the definition and so there might be an extra point available for that. Another one, it can be measured on a variety of scales. Like we've already said, we could measure an individual person's ecological footprint or we could mention a nation's ecological footprint. And last, it represents sustainability or a lack of sustainability depending on the size of an ecological footprint.